Hey guys, it's Selwan here, and the Fury Warrior is all about smashing Fez. Unlike ARMS that is much more planned and methodical playstyle, Fury is just fast and brutal, until it gets to a point where you have to manage damage buffs, but it's still a very much balls to the wall spec. So before we get to the nitty gritty on what's Fury all about, the absolute basics. Well, as Fury, there's three big main abilities that you need to concern yourself about. Bloodthirst, Raging Blow and Rampage. Along with your filler, Furious Slash, Cooldown, Battle Cry and Passive Enrage. All together formulate this cyclic type of gameplay surrounding your resource, which is Rage that is generated by auto attacks and certain abilities. The basic idea is to use Bloodthirst, which is on a short cooldown, doing a fair amount of damage and building rage, but if it crits, it enrages you, a buff that lasts for 4 seconds, increasing your attack speed and overall damage, which is defined by your mastery, plus opens a window for your raging blow to be usable, where you would just furiously use it to generate more rage and damage, while filling in with Furious Slash when nothing to click, until you reach 85 rage so you can spend it all on this big hit that is Rampage, also giving you in rage without needing to crit, then just build rage back up and rinse and repeat. That's essentially the core gameplay of Fury currently. Now obviously there's indeed some management to be had and isn't all about slamming those keys randomly. Balance for one can drastically change that playstyle, so let's look at them before we delve deeper into your gameplay, shall we? So in your first set of talents there's War Machine. Killing a target grants you a 30% haste and movement speed. Now one very important thing to keep in mind is that this talent will proc from any enemy that you have hit and dies near you, alright? It does not require the last blow like most abilities similar to this one, meaning is your go-to choice whenever there's adds present, so a must for dungeons and bosses like the Mistress and Desolate Host. We're gonna talk more in depth about stats in the advanced section, but haste is overall one of the most important stats to you, so whenever there's a chance for adds, be sure to take it. Endless Rage gives you an increase in rage generation by 30% from your auto attacks, which is one of your main sources of rage buildup. So when do you take this? Well, on fights that are pure single target and no easy adds nearby to kill, so most raid fights. Basically it's gonna give you a more smoother rage buildup, especially since in rage doubles your auto attack speed. Fresh meat in general is never really useful, the extra crit chance for bloodthirst on targets above 80% HP could potentially prove good in very situational fights, but the thing is, it's not 100% chance, but 60%. So be as it may, the other choices are far superior and remember to switch them depending on your fight. Next year there's double time which is what you want to run the most, extra charge of charge is always useful, not only for more mobility but for more rage generation as well. More on that later. Shockwave can be pretty good for a Mythic Plus when you need a stun, can really help when there's none other available. Stormbolt, there really isn't that much usefulness in PvE. Next, there's Wrecking Ball, which is a must whenever you're doing meaningful AoE, so your go-to for dungeons or boss fights with a lot of adds. AoE in Fury is very much in whirlwind spam, so this is giving you a proc for extra damage. Avatar is increasing your damage by 20%, so it's basically an extra DPS cooldown on top of your battle cry, so it's a pretty good option overall when you're not having to take Wrecking Ball, so a great choice for single target fights. It can also work for AoE, especially if you combine all of your CDs and with trinkets, although harder to pull off than Wrecking Ball. As for Outburst, adds an interesting mechanic. Berserker Rage is basically an defensive type cooldown, removing fears and whatnot, so it's very situational. But when you use this talent, it's gonna make it so that it actually fits during your normal rotation, providing an unuse in Rage. Now, as you get more gear, this talent proves highly inefficient. However, if you are newly 
Dinth Fury Warrior, don't have a lot of gear and getting in rages can prove to be hard for you, you could try this talent out in situations that you would otherwise take Avatar. In the end though, you're gonna end up changing between Wrecking Ball and Avatar depending on the fights, much like the first tier talent. Following tier, there's War Paints. Now, Enrage is a great buff and all for extra damage and attack speed, but as a drawback. It increases your damage taken by 20%. Why? Because class fantasy matters. Just like science, you cannot argue with it. But you have a bigger health pool, so it's fine. That said, you probably want to take this talent just to relieve your damage taken a little bit. If you don't really care about that or don't need to, you have two other utility choices. Bounding Stride for extra mobility and can prove useful for those charges to generate rage mid-fight, more on that later, or Furious Charge making your Bloodthirst heal more after a charge, so for more solo-like content. Next tier there's Frothing Berserker, which grants you a damage and movement buff for 6 seconds after reaching 100 rage. Now this will obviously change your priority and thinking about using Rampage, which is the only ability that costs rage along with Execute. Rampage costs 85 rage to use, so the basic idea is to generate rage with your auto attacks and abilities like Bloodthirst and Raging Blood like I said before, and then when you reach the 85 rage you would use that Rampage, right? Now with this talent you no longer would want to do that, but to purposely reach the 100 uh, rage first to get the buff, only then you would use that Rampage, increasing its damage plus all of your other following abilities for the next 6 seconds. Remember that Rampage procs in Rage, so is a great combo. Carnage, on the other hand, just reduces the Rage cost of Rampage by 15, which is fine, but is not really that great benefit to you. It could potentially work for cleaving fights to cleave more Rampages after a Whirlwind to gain mid cleaver, but in the end, that damage increase from the previous talent just outshines it completely if you use it properly. As for Massacre, as its own unique use, but it's too situational, with every Execute crit makes your next Rampage free. Now on Execute phases, which we're gonna talk more later, you start using less Rampages, if any, since you're gonna be using that Rage on Executes. With this talent, it would allow you to still keep up that Rampage and in turn giving you more Enrages, so more Execute damage. So it can work for long Execute phases, but the problem is that it's useless for 80% of the fight. So when you add everything up, do you want to get this almost constant 15% damage increase throughout the whole fight? Or just that damage increase during the last 20% of the fight? Probably not, right? Now, if you do have the talent LEGO Ring, then it could prove to be an interesting combo, as then you can use both Froding Berserker and Massacre. As it stands, Froding Berserker overall is the way to go for most fights. Next year, Bloodbath is a talent that I actually forgot that existed, and currently you might think is kinda useless, but not entirely. Basically, you activate this buff, and for the next seconds, all of your other abilities will add this split dot. 40% based on the damage that you did, so when you think about it, for AoE fights can prove to be quite nice, but not so much for a single target at least where the adds or mobs live long enough to take all of those ticks. So, is again situational like a lot of your talents, and it's not a must to use as the other AoE choices, because the other talents in this tier, even though more single target based, won't hurt your AoE DPS too much. However, if you feel like experimenting a little bit in dungeons and see what it can do, or even in fights like the Mistress, give it a try. Just again, remember those dots are gonna tick for about 14 seconds in total or possibly more until the dots drop completely. So keep that in mind. If used properly, can indeed prove to be a valuable AoE ability and has a pretty relative short cooldown as well, so it's a cool addition. Now, Frenzy and Inner Rage are two working talents which will offer two different types of playstyles, and that choice is gonna depend on you and your gear, alright? So with Frenzy, you pretty much stay with the bare bones Fury type playstyle. Every time you use Fury Slash, you gain 5% haste buff for 15 seconds. You're gonna use Fury Slash to fill in anyway, so maintaining it won't be overly hard, 
Haste is one of your most powerful stats, so if capped up can prove to be pretty valuable buff, while well, you just do bloodthirst, raging blow, spam during enrage, and then the rampages. So not that bad. And it will help as well if you're lacking haste as a newly dinged character, for an example. Now you might hate the type of playstyle that Raging Blow has with Enrage, because I sure do. So Inner Rage fixes that, increasing its damage by 150% and adds a cooldown to the ability and no longer needs Enrage to be usable. So it's gonna function exactly like your Bloodthirst. In the end, I think I can safely say choose whatever you prefer the most. However, with the current tier set in the tomb, something amazing happens. The set bonus has a 50% chance on your Bloodthirst crits to give you a buff for 8 seconds, increasing your Raging Blow damage by 50%. So, it's a wonderful buff indeed. When you add things together, Inner Rage will pull ahead of Frenzy. So, when you get the tier set from Toss, you have to take this in consideration. But in the end, with the tier set, Inner Rage still proves to be the best choice by far. Last tier is a complete no-brainer. Bladestorm, even though a really cool ability, is absolute garbage for Fury. Your AoE basically constitutes of Whirlwind and Odin's Fury, and they are far more than enough. And making you channel it, you just losing DPS, really. Dragon's Roar, even though another cool ability, it doesn't really add anything to your AoE and you don't really need it. Reckless Abandon is the must for you. As Fury, your DPS is very much tied to Battlecry uses. The increase in duration is just an amazing addition, plus the 100 Rage just allows you to immediately go for that Rampage at the start of the fight, plus getting through Thing Berserker, and get your damage going right off the bat. Great for both in single target and AoE. Okay, now that's all settled and done, let's move over to your rotation and priorities. So your rotation is first gonna depend on what builds you are using, Frenzy or Inner Rage, due to the changes to Raging Blow. So I'm first gonna go over the Inner Rage build, then go over the Frenzy build. Now let's go over a normal rotation with no cooldowns. Like I said, Battlecry has a big influence on your overall DPS and gameplay, so this will also give you an idea of how big that's going to be. That said, Charge will obviously be the ability that you want to start every fight, and in Fury it does give you a big chunk of Rage, 45, so keep that in mind. Now, like I said previously, the idea of Fury is to build Rage for Rampages and proc in Rages. So how are you gonna do that? Bloodthirst and Raging Blow. Both have relatively short cooldowns, which depend on your haste, but they're gonna be around 2 to 4 seconds. Now, Bloodthirst will give you rage, and very importantly, if it crits, it enrages you, which is gonna increase your overall damage and auto attack speed. So that will be what you first want to click. But this is not your priority number one, as that will shift depending on your current situation. If you enraged, great. If not, you're going to use a Raging Blow anyway. Now, Raging Blow, especially with uh, the tier 20 set bonus, takes priority above everything if and is a big if enraged. Then, when nothing to click, you go for your filler, Furious Slash, which does fairly weak damage but gives you a buff, Taste of Blood, giving a 50% chance on your next Bloodthirst, stacking 6 times, so think of it as a bad luck protection for it. Then you just keep building that rage until you hit 85, that allows you to use Rampage. Now because of Frothing Berserker, you don't want to use it right away, but pull more rage until 100 so you get a buff. Then Rampage for this big hit, you get enraged from it as well, so you got all of those juicy damage buffs. You go in immediately for that raging blow, bloodthirst, and then just rinse and repeat to build rage back up, and you know, just repeat the process. Quite simple. Now, as you can probably already see, the buildup really hurts your DPS, especially during the start up of fights. So this is where Battle Cry will come in. Increasing your crit chance to 100%, plus with the talent is giving you 100 rage. Meaning, if you're gonna do what you did earlier, you're gonna charge, then pop Battle Cry along with Avatar if talented, get 100 rage, so you get Frothing Berserker right off the bat, then Rampage that is going to crit for this really nice damage, get in rage, 
then Raging Blow and everything is critting, your damage is nice and high, and then since you are on this sure chance to crit, you also want to fit in your other cooldown, your artifact ability, Odin's Fury. It's more of an AoE ability, but you still want to use it in single target, but very importantly, only during battle cry windows. The same follows for Avatar. Whatever happens, Odin's Fury gets off cooldown or Avatar, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna use it unless battle cry is ready to go as well, all right? So after you use that Odin's Fury, you just keep it up. You would use a Bloodthirst next. Keep in mind to save that Bloodthirst after Odin's Fury, not before, to extend your enrage duration for as much as possible. Remember that you are critting, so it's giving you an enrage for sure. If you use it right after that previous Raging Blow, you're just losing potential enrage uptime, since its duration does not accumulate time above 4 seconds. Okay, then you just go with your normal rotation like before, Bloodthirst, Raging Blow, Furious Slash, until you reach 100 Rage for another Rampage and repeat the process. If, if you are enraged at 100 Rage, you still want to use that Raging Blow if available, like I said before. Don't blow your load immediately with that Rampage. Make sure to make use out of that Enrage as much as possible, even if it means overcapping Rage then just do the same as before. Now, Fury damage is highly tied to your Battle Cry uses. That's why you want to put everything that you have during its windows, like your other cooldowns, pots, and unused trinkets work really great with it. Outside of Battle Cry, your damage is gonna suffer, your rage generation is lower, you're not gonna get as many enrages, and you just deal less damage overall. Thankfully, due to your artifact traits, you have an ability that for every rampage that you do, you have a small chance to gain a buff, Odin's champion, for every offensive ability that you cast during its duration, it's gonna reduce the cooldown of your DPS cooldowns by one second, so it will help a little bit for dropping the cooldown from 50 seconds to about 40 seconds if you're lucky. But in the end, if you really want those frequent Battle Cry uses, Convergence of Fates would be the way to go for Battle Cry cooldown to be on average of 30 to 35 seconds. A very powerful choice for Fury indeed. As for using Battle Cry mid fights, just make sure you're going in with as low rage as possible so none of it goes to waste. Best way to achieve this is to use a Rampage beforehand to empty it all regardless if we get Frothing Berserker or not, then Raging Blow to take advantage of Enrage, that priority still stands, then Battle Cry and just do the same as before. However, you want to do it right before Battle Cry comes off cooldown, do not delay it just to spend your Rage, so keep track of those timers. Battle Cry comes off cooldown, you use it. This is just something that you want to try and do whenever you get a chance to do it. But that's basically how your rotation and priorities are gonna go. There are some other things to keep in mind, but I'll save that for the advanced section. In general, all of your damage is tied to these small windows, be Battle Cry, Enrage, Frothing Berserker to some extent, Meaning, the more you can keep them up, primarily in Rage and Frothing Berserker, the more damage you will do. If you have an almost 100% uptime on them, well, you are in Fury Heaven. Now, for the Frenzy build, everything stays the same besides the uses of Raging Blow and Fury Slash. So, you would charge. Now, to be able to use Raging Blow at all here, you need to be enraged. So, you would Bloodthirst. If you get enraged, you would just slam that Raging Blow for its entire duration. If not, you would fill in with a Furious Slash with Frenzy, getting that nice haste buff along with the grip buff. For the Frenzy buff itself, you don't want to prioritize it a Furious Slash because of it, alright? Just build it naturally, when you have nothing to click. The only time you want to prioritize it is if you already got the buff active and it's about to run out. Only then you would click on it to keep it up. Otherwise, focus on your other abilities. And in a short amount of time, you will get the three stacks just from those windows when you are free to click it. Now, you would just keep repeating the process of Bloodthirst, get enraged for Raging Blow, if not Furious Slash, until you get to the 100 
rage again for that rampage. Since rampage gives you in rage for sure, you would spam raging blow after it and again just repeat. It's a little bit more restrictive than in a rage build and again performing slight worse than it currently, plus adds frenzy to manage, although it's never really much of an issue, unless you keep getting in rage procs, which never really gives you enough time to furious slash. That's one of the reasons why this build gets worse over time as you get more gear, but in general it's pretty straightforward as well. As for cooldown uses, stays exactly the same, getting the outburst talents would also work great here for those on-demand raging blows from the free enraged. Now execute phases. When you reach 20% um, of HP on mobs, execute becomes available to use, and in theory is a much simpler ability comparing to arms. It costs uh, 20 rage and does damage. That's basically it. Your artifact rate, Juggernaut, also increases its damage by 3%, stacking 99 times. So yeah, it can go pretty high on lengthy phases. Now one problem that will arise is that the rage cost is going to conflict with your rampages. So the simplest way to explain execute phase in Fury is to stop doing rampages and just do bloodthirst and raging blow for rage and in rage and just execute when available. Now that works but isn't really the optimal way of doing things. First you need to look for the duration of the fight. Is it a short execute phase like a dungeon boss or a longer one like a raid boss? In a general sense of course. If it's a shorter duration you can spam executes like crazy while building rage with bloodthirst and raging blow until you get a battle cry cooldown, then bloodthirst to get enraged and spam execute again for big hits. If it's in a longer duration, well, you can technically do the same, just use executes when available, then battle cry with enrage from bloodthirst for big executes. It's simple and it works. However, if you want, you can squeeze extra damage by purposely be near the 100 rage mark for frothing berserker, okay? Don't forget about this talent. But keep in mind, this is only worth in long execute phases. The idea would still to do bloodthirst and raging blow for rage, but to not spam executes and stay in this window of 100 to 50 rage so you can easily get frothing berserker while at the same time still be using executes. Hopefully get in rage, use some executes, then stop to build rage back to 100 for the buff once it runs out and repeat. It's obviously slightly harder to pull off depending on your gear, but if you do it correctly you will be able to do more damage in the long run. The only time you really want to spam executes would be during battle cry windows with both a frothing berserker and enrage for those really big hits. The rest of your cooldowns stay the same. Although for Odin's Fury you might want to use it whenever now since you want to prioritize execute during battle cry. And you can still Still use Furious Slash if needed, plus giving a higher chance for Enrage from Bloodthirsts, or if you're using the Frenzy build, you definitely want to use it to keep the buff up. If using the Massacre talent, especially with the Talent Ring, well, you can indeed fit Rampage back in your rotation, so do the same as before, and just use those free Rampages on proc to get a free Enrage, and just keep executing and generating Rage. This way, you can basically have a 100% uptime on Enrages. Now that's all done, let's look at the glorious Fury AoE. And three abilities enter the fray for your AoE. Whirlwind, mid cleaver, a buff provided by Whirlwind, making your next Bloodthirst or Rampage cleave four targets. And obviously Odin's Fury and um, Bloodbath if talented. Now just like the execute phases, you need to look at your current situation to find the perfect strategy on how to cleave an AoE. So what do you do for an example with two mobs? Well, casting Whirlwind here won't do too much, right? But you still want to use it for mid cleaver. So the idea would stay exactly like before in your normal rotation. But right before doing a rampage, you would Whirlwind, not really for the damage, but for the cleave buff. And then rampage cleave and just do the same as before. For three mobs, again, it's gonna change slightly. It's gonna be exactly like before with two mobs, but now you can focus a bit more on whirlwinds. Still not too much because it's not really worth it. So just use in place 
of Furious Slash. Now for 4 mobs is when you stop using Raging Blow and just do Bloodthirst for a chance of Enrage and just Whirlwind Spam until 100 Rage for Rampage Cleave, get Enraged and more Whirlwind Spam. In 8 to 10 targets, basically just a lot of them, just Whirlwind Spam. No longer you want to Bloodthirst, but you still want to use Rampage for Enrage, okay? That's very important. Really quite simple, as long as you remember when to do what. As for cooldown uses, you just have to take some things in mind. Usually, and I bet you already done this, or that you have seen countless Fury Warriors, is just charging a battle cry and just Odin's Fury and Whirlwind Spam and just splooge everywhere. Now, that technically works and you will see your damage in all its glory. However, you're forgetting one important thing, Enrage. Now, do you want Odin's Fury with 30-50% to 50 extra damage, depending on your mastery, or without it? I sure want that bonus. So for cooldown use, don't blow your load immediately, just like before with the enraged uh, Raging Blows and Rampages. First, you would charge. Then, you would Whirlwind to get the Meat Cleaver buff. Then, you Battle Cry. Then, you Rampage. You get enraged. You have all of those nice buffs, only then you use Odin's Fury and Whirlwind Spam. Alright? If you have Wrecking Ball, well, just use when you get the proc, even on a lower target count. If you're using Bloodbath, just use before using Odin's Fury and use it in combination with Battlecry and always try to combo it with Battlecry, just like Avatar and all of your other cooldowns. And that covers everything. Now let's talk more about the advanced-ish subjects. The key to really play Fury to maximum levels is all on your damage buffs. Now, that's obviously gonna depend on your gear, such as your Beast Legos that give you extra rage and stats like Haste that we're gonna talk about next, but it's all about Enrage, Froding Berserker and Battle Cry. To be able to squeeze every possible damage out of your character is to do the best of your ability to not only maintain those buffs for as long as possible, but also what you are prioritizing during their duration. For Frooding Berserker, it's all about rage generation. Gear obviously gonna take a huge part, but for Enrage, it's not only about gear, but pure management. Remember that Enrage does not go over 4 seconds, because again, it does not stack. It's little things such as these that is gonna define your damage in Fury in the long run, even if Fury is not performing all that well comparing to other specs. As for stats, again, haste is highly important to you, followed by mastery. Now, mastery is just a damage increase and your own skill and haste is gonna define how much you take advantage of it, like we talked earlier about managing in rage. As for haste itself, there's a couple of breakpoints you need to be aware of, mainly about reducing the cooldowns of your abilities and the global cooldowns overall, meaning you can fit more during those damage windows that Fury is full of. The first big one you want to meet is around 27% and 50% that is realistically only obtainable with Lust or other similar effects. As for Legos, your bees are clearly the head and legs for that extra rage, and keep in mind that Legos will change your stat priority, the same thing goes with talents, uh, like that extra rage that you get from your Legos can devalue haste slightly. That's why simming stats remains ever so important. A more drastic example would be the ring that allows you to get Massacre with a Froating Berserker, meaning more enrage uptime during execute phases, so your mastery value use higher. Same thing can happen with their sets. In terms of other LEGOs, they are pretty straightforward on what they do, so it doesn't really need explaining. As for add-ons and whatnot, I obviously recommend Tell Me When that I use or Weak Auras to track all of those damage buffs nicely, so there's less room for mistakes. I also highly recommend setting a macro for your cooldowns tied to your battle cry, so you no longer really need to track Avatar or your preferred on use trinket and get them to use whenever battle cry is ready so check in the description for all that info so guys that covers it all hopefully it was helpful to you like and subscribe for more videos have a fantastic day everyone and i will see you all next time bye bye